Welcome crafters! Let's start with the lemon. Tear a sheet of aluminum foil in half, roll one of the squares into a ball. Be sure to not compact the ball too much just in case you need to adjust it later. Wrap the second half around the ball shape and pinch the edges to give it a lemony shape. Cut a strip of tissue paper about double the length of the lemon. Next, cut rectangles that are wide enough to overlap on the lemon and cut as many rectangles as you have lemons. Take one rectangular sheet and pinch it in the middle lengthwise to form a bow tie shape. Twist it all the way around until you have two cupped ends on each side of the tissue paper. Now it's time to get that hot glue gun. Add a dot of hot glue to the tip of the lemon and attach it to the twisted part of the tissue paper. Afterwards, begin gluing the tissue paper to the lemon, finishing one half. When the first half is glued down, fold the second half over the lemon and continue gluing. Make sure that that cupping tissue paper shape is cupping around your tinfoil lemon. Here I am just twisting one end of the tissue paper, cutting off any excess paper and adding and gluing a little divot on this end of my lemon to imitate where it would have been connected to the tree to make it look even more like an actual lemon. And once you're done gluing, your lemons are all done. Let's prep the leaves. Download the magnolia file from our website and import the magnolia leaves SVG. If you don't have a Cricut, there's also a PDF file that you can actually just print and cut by hand. When the leaves are imported, they will all be in separate layers that are grouped together. You will need to ungroup the leaves so they can be individually moved. After they are ungrouped, select the line layers and change them from cut to score lines. They should become dotted lines. Then ungroup the lines and attach each leaf with its own score line so you can resize them individually. I made all of mine all around three and a half inches tall. Now change the quantity to however many leaves you want to cut. More leaves equals a more fluffier wreath. Here I am also quickly demonstrating how you can rotate and move the leaves to maximize paper space if you'd like. And I also cut about 80 leaves total for a 16 inch wreath. Now you will cut the leaves on a light cardstock setting using the blue Cricut mat. Make sure you have your scoring tool inserted. I like to use lightweight cardstock because it actually curls a lot better than thicker paper. This step is totally optional, but because magnolia leaves are brown on the other side, I chose to dry brush some gold paint on the back of several leaves to include in my wreath as an accent. Dry brushing is simply using a brush with a small amount of paint on the tips, no water, and a light hand when painting. Now let's upload the magnolia flower SVG. Like the leaves, the flowers will need to be ungrouped to be individually sized. For my flowers, I made the outside petals five inches wide and the inside four inches wide. You'll need to change the color of the inside piece of the flower so the Cricut places it onto a different paper when cutting, and then size just this inside piece to two inches and duplicate this shape only. Now set your quantity. I made four flowers total for my wreath and again you can move and rotate the shapes to maximize paper space if you'd like and then cut your flowers on the blue mat on the light cardstock setting. Now it's time to add life into these beautiful flowers by curling them. Using a paintbrush or marker, begin rolling the leaves, petal, and pollen pieces. Starting with the petals, roll the petal around the paintbrush inward on all sides. For the pollen, I'm not totally sure the actual term for the inside of the flower, so I'm calling them the pollen pieces. Roll all the edges inward with a smaller brush so that all the strips all loosely curl in towards the center. For the second piece, roll the edges inward and squish the strands together so that they are packed together and can be placed and glued inside the loosely curled 
Paul in peace. When rolling the leaves, first bend on that score line and I like to roll them from different directions, up and down, side to the side, and I feel like it gives the leaves a lot more movement and character. Also add a few more bends to add even more uniqueness to each leaf. After rolling all of your petals and leaves, it's time to do the glue. Glue the magnolia flower together by placing the small petals inside the large petals, making sure that they are staggered. Then glue the second piece of the pollen into the center of the loosely curled pollen. Lastly, glue the pollen stack into the center of the flower. Repeat this with all of your flowers. If you are having troubles gluing down the centerpiece, you can also use the end of a paintbrush to really make sure that it is glued down. Time to assemble the wreath. I cut my wreath form from cardboard, but you could buy one instead. You will glue the leaves onto the wreath form by gluing the stems and placing them on the form. Be sure to overlap and stagger the leaves as you go. Glue the leaves all the way around. When you get to the end of the circle, just glue the leaves underneath the first place leaves so that you don't see any stems. Once your leaves are all glued on the form, simply glue the flowers and lemons directly onto your leaves. I recommend placing them down first without glue so you can evenly space them before committing to the hot glue placement. After your wreath has been assembled, flip it over and glue a loop of twine to the top of your wreath so it can be hung. This is a very lightweight wreath so I recommend hanging it indoors. Lastly, admire it and subscribe to my channel for more beautiful crafts.